So, today I'm going to talk to you about galvanic corrosion. We're going to go over very interesting things like the definition, some problems, some examples, and perhaps even solutions. Um, here's a definition of galvanic corrosion. You probably won't understand it. It uses a lot of big words like cathode and active metal. What do those words mean? What's electrolyte mean? Hmm? So, here's a definition you might actually understand. When two metals are connected in an electrolyte solution, electrons will flow from the anode to the cathode, causing corrosion. What this means is that you have these balls of energy floating in kind of a liquid of electrolyte from one positive energy to a negative energy. This sounds very new age, but trust me, it's very scientific. Okay, so here is a thing called an anodic index. An anodic index is essentially a uh, table listing all the um, affinities of metals for electrons. Here is a uh, sequence of red squares on a white background. What the red squares represent are bad metal combinations. You can see on the left-hand column, the metals are that should not go with the right-hand column have their intersecting red square highlighted. This may sound confusing to you, but that's because I'm a scientist. Here we can see zinc being corroded in the presence of iron in an electrolyte bath. This is because zinc is more anodic than iron and gives up ions into the solution. On the right, we can see copper corroding iron because copper is actually less anodic than iron. One can imagine if we had a copper structure on an iron frame, like the Statue of Liberty, perhaps, we would run into problems in the structural design. So, the problem we encounter when engineering structures in a real-world context when we have jobs is if we connect two metals with dissimilar anodic potentials, they can corrode, which can actually cause weakening in the structure due to stress concentrations at the small pits on the surface. Some examples of galvanic corrosion include the Statue of Liberty, marine structures, lasagna, yachts, and aircraft. Here is a very tall green woman. As we understand, the Statue of Liberty is copper on an iron frame. Now this is obviously a problem if you've been paying attention because copper has a lower electron affinity than iron, as such will corrode the iron frame. Oil rigs. What's the deal with those? As we can see, oil rigs are made of metal, and they rust when they get wet. Are they made of dissimilar metals? I didn't think so, but apparently. As we can see here, a stainless steel beam is joined together with mild steel bolts. Mild steel? More like dead steel. As you can see, Rust is deposited on the surface of the stainless steel by the electrolytic action of the water. In fact, if one were a scientist, one might understand that the distribution of rust on the surface of the beam is in fact a representation of the strength of the electric field extending through the electrolyte. Lasagna. What's the deal with that, you might ask? How does this relate to engineering? Well, I'll tell you. Lasagna is in fact a potent electrolyte, and as you well know, dissimilar metals in the presence of an electrolyte can lead to corrosion and failure. Now, if one were so amateurish as to use aluminum foil on a steel pan, one could end up with a very messy dinner. A problem that is often discussed in the yachting club as we smoke our cigars and sip our brandy is the experience of pitting in the holes of boats. Many of my friends in the club own high-performance magnesium hold monstrosities. These tacky boats are built for speed not to last a lifetime of luxury like my gold-plated yacht. And when these boats are connected to a power supply with cheaper aluminum hold boats, the magnesium experiences extensive pinning, and soon their silly toys are destroyed. I laugh at them from my golden throat. <laughs>
the solutions to galvanic corrosion are far and wide. The simplest, obviously, is to simply not connect your two pieces of metal by a wire. Obviously, this is not a solution in all cases. For if one were to build a large metal structure, one could not simply insulate every joint. Could one? No. The other option, of course, would be to simply not use dissimilar metals at all. While this works for most cases, certain advanced applications, or perhaps aesthetic ones, such as the Statue of Liberty, require the use of specific dissimilar metals, and would not allow us to use the same metal for the entire structure. However, as we well know, if a metal with an extremely high affinity for electrons is placed in electrical contact with two other metals, it will experience all of the corrosion that the other metals would otherwise experience. It essentially forms a scapegoat. The metal with the high electron affinity experiences all the pitting the other metals would otherwise experience if not in the presence of that metal. <coughs> a final option would be to connect dissimilar metals to a DC power source, essentially reversing the voltage otherwise that would have been created. The Boeing 787, such a majestic aircraft. But unfortunately plagued by the problem of dissimilar metals. The 787 is a high-tech machine and as such uses many titanium fasteners. However, when one were to connect titanium to mild steel, god forbid, or high-grade aerospace alloy, like 7075 perhaps, one would find that the titanium would experience pitting. This could lead to very bad things. Cadmium plating is one solution to the problem of galvanic corrosion. In this procedure, a steel part can be joined to an aluminum or titanium part if the steel part is first coated in cadmium. This forms a barrier between the two metals and prevents galvanic corrosion. Unfortunately, this process is illegal in Europe due to trivial concerns about health and safety and the environment and things like that. Unfortunately, it is time I depart on my golden yacht and sail off into warmer waters. I hope I had left you with thoughts about corrosion, galvanism, galvanic corrosion, metals, and as such, perhaps you can learn in the future and apply these topics May this knowledge serve you well. I must bid you adieu. Thank you for your cooperation. I do. Thank you for your cooperation. Here we see. Oh, fuck! What is that? <laughs> okay, so that that's the statue. Okay, that's, that's the Statue of Liberty. That's, that's gonna be recorded. What is that? Here we have.